in the brief moments before I pick up the clubs and start filling around like Icarus, I wanted to talk quickly about the evolution of swordplay. The idea that somehow you go from the earliest sources and then things get better and more refined and more improved until you get to this pinnacle of the art before it either devolves or becomes, depending on your opinion, the absolutely superb sports fencing or whatever application you have nowadays. Now, this is a complete nonsense. Unless you look at it as being evolutionary in the sense that it evolves to suit its niche in the way it's needed at the time. So you could say sports fencing, for example, we don't need to kill each other with swords very much, so it's kind of a natural safe conclusion of where to go with the sword art. However, to suggest that going from the earliest sources, something like I-33, 133, going up to something like Tebow or Angelo or something like this, and that there's an evolution where swordplay gets better and more sophisticated, I believe is a complete misunderstanding of what's going on. So I want to look at three different sources and I have cherry picked these utterly because they prove my point. And there are other opinions, but the reason I've chosen them is because they have a very, very similar approach. And it's actually a combination of these three things that I want to look at. So the first one is 133, which we've looked at here. Okay, our oldest source, probably about 1320, something like this. Gerard Thibault, okay, 17th century, and Pima who I apologise if I've mispronounced his name. But Viedma, I think, is a very good way of understanding Tebow. He's very, very helpful. And Tebow is just incredibly, incredibly anal and ex exacting in what you have to do. So he's a wonderful resource for understanding how different angles are played and then using his geometric understanding to look at commonalities with other sources. So he's, he's a very useful source as well. So... They have things in common. Viedma um, has an idea that all people are divided basically into possibilities of what they can do. So he'll say there's an obtuse angle, there's a straight line, there's an acute angle, there's an offline lateral and a withdrawn, and there's also a returning to centre. And he says that basically all people have to abide by that set of parameters just because they are people and they have arms and their arms can only really do this thing. Now, if you look at 133, it says all people, regardless of skill, even if they're ignorant of the art of fighting, will fight from seven postures. Here, 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 here. And you'll notice I've done three positions for one of those, but I'll go into that in the next video. In addition to this idea that there is a division of potentials of human movement, that you can only fight from a limited number of positions, and that every description you give to something else is really a subcategory of that, these systems, although they're divided by several hundred years, also have this concept that rather than going straight against somebody, keeping your sword out of the way of them and then suddenly lurching in, doing something like this, that it's much, much safer for you to know where the opponent's sword is. And that in knowing it and subjecting it or binding it, you can then gauge where they're going to go. And if you're familiar with 133 and you've been practicing it for a very, very long time, you'll notice that really your ability to track people through this movement is so inherent to the system. It's mentioned categorically, it becomes more important as you go on. One final point of commonality that I would mention as we're going through these things is that in Viedma, as well as in 133, there is this idea that the Volga, the, the common way of fighting, is that if your sword is bound, what you'll do is you'll try and flee three foot to the side, two, three feet to the side, in order to carry out your counterattack to free yourself from the blade to do something. And he says this is massively, massively flawed. 133 says that the common response to being bound is to flee to the side, again, obviously to free yourself from this, and that you should expect that this is, this is a common, common way of doing this. So again, this shows on both of them this awareness that this is what people do commonly, and that they feel there is a superior way of going through. Now, Everything I'm saying is not to extol the virtues of these systems over other systems. It's purely to point out that they have a commonality of arguments separated by centuries. That there isn't an evolution where one has got better than the other through hundreds and hundreds of years. It's that both of them are pertinent for their time period and the use of the weapon. And they remain so in their individuality. Take care.